Hey guys, me Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Wednesday mountain weather update. My first stop is to a sunny, calm solitude uh, ski resort up in Big Cottonwood Canyon of Utah this morning. It's calm and quiet up in Little Cottonwood, uh, but it's the calm before the storm. We've got a major storm system coming in this evening, overnight, tomorrow, into the early morning hours of Friday with feet of accumulation. I'd say things get kicked off up there around 4 p.m. today. That's when the snow, I think, will start, and then it will intensify overnight across all of the Wasatch. And I've got some really big numbers coming up. I'll show you. Let me take you into Colorado. It's been a great couple of days. This is Loveland Ski Area, um, the chair up to the Continental Divide. Running down through the clouds this morning. Eventually, this, uh, this cloud cover will start to clear out briefly. And then the next storm system comes in. The same one that's going to be affecting Utah will affect Colorado. But a great couple of days across the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Um, we had the actual storm system two days ago. And then yesterday it was that northwest flow that kicked in for the rest of the day. And it was good. Um, Loveland picked up 15 inches in the last two days. A uh, number of resorts were in the double digits over the last two days as a result of this. And we're going to add uh, some good accumulation here with this next storm system. Um, let me take you to radar and show you what we got going on. So our next storm system is moving into California right now. There's your central California radar. There's some snow for Tahoe and also down towards Mammoth and some heavy rains at lower elevations. Up in the northeast, a warm storm system is moving through with a lot of rain right now through the Ohio Valley and up into the northeast. This is going to be mainly rain at a lot of the ski areas. Some places higher up might escape with a mix or some snow, but it's not until the low actually passes that it's going to turn colder. So we're, you're really in the warm sector of this storm system. All right, let's look at the, uh, the water vapor here across the west and kind of get the lay of the land. There's our big storm up there heading into the northeast. So the oranges and reds are going to be your drier air in the lower levels. The whites and the blues are going to be your moisture. And so there's our, our storm system right there. You've got a big area of low pressure behind it as well. All of this is going to become part of the storm track uh, over the next five, six, seven, eight, nine days um, across the west. Okay, let me uh, just talk about my snow timeline here. So we got a storm system approaching today, uh, Thursday, and into Friday for a lot of the Intermountain West, especially into Utah and uh, Colorado. Another storm system behind that, 310 through 312, and then another one, 312 through 314. So the storms are lined up. Um, that's the bottom line. And here's my snow timeline. Best odds of snow, or when will the powder days be? It'll be these days, I think. You know, for big sky, moderate accumulations on 3-6. And then the next storm brings in moderate to heavy accumulations on 311. And the Wasatch, your big stuff comes in tonight, overnight, throughout tomorrow, and into the early morning hours of 37. We've got a couple of, uh, of sizable powder days ahead tomorrow and on Friday. And then 311, it looks moderate. In the Tetons, you've got heavy snow coming tomorrow, and then heavy 311 through 313. In Colorado, you got snow coming in very late tonight. Same storm that's going to hit Utah and then runs into the morning of 37 with heavy accumulations and moderate on 311. Um, I'm not going to go through all these, but uh, you can see there, Tahoe today, you've got heavy accumulations, and then another uh, shot of heavy accumulations, 310 through 313. There's your mix today with rain or rain snow up into the, uh, the northeast. Okay, let's drill down on Alta, Utah here. So this is the forecast mediagram effective at about 9,000 feet. All right, so here's today. This is uh, Wednesday, the 5th of March. Snow starts up this afternoon tonight, runs all the way through tomorrow, and then starts to come to an end and diminish early on Friday the 7th. This model generates about 25 to 30 inches of snowfall up there at uh, Alta, Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton. The winds really do increase 40, 45 uh, mile per hour, almost 50 mile an hour winds at times. And the high temperature today, about 30. Tomorrow it's 24, and then colder on Friday in the teens. So pretty big storm system. My only question with this is going to be <clears throat> wind direction. How will that play into the, uh, the snow accumulation in the Wasatch? Um, there's a lot of south-southwesterly winds 
um, before it shifts to more of a west-northwest at the tail end of the storm. Okay, let me take you up into uh, Wyoming. This is going to be Jenny Lake. Um, this is your Jenny Lake forecast, effective about 86 to 8,700 feet. All right, so Wednesday, March 5th today, snow comes in very late tonight, continues throughout the day tomorrow, and then trickles into early Friday. This model, is it comes in big. It forecasts about 20 inches of accumulation. I don't think it's going to be that much. There's just not enough wind up there in Wyoming. For one thing, you can see the lack of wind. Um, because sometimes if you've got a strong wind, you can overcome some of these obstacles. But I wouldn't be surprised if Jackson Hole Ski Area picks up a foot of snow. But 20 inches seems awfully high to me. Um, 24 degrees today up there at 86, 8,700 feet. Tomorrow, 26. And then the temperatures drop on Friday. Okay, let me show you uh, Colorado here. This is the time height forecast for relative humidity, and this is effective at Copper Mountain, Colorado, off I-70 between uh, Summit County and Vail. Um, the green is higher relative humidity. That's going to be your essentially your moisture in the atmosphere. This is a 72-hour forecast, and you read it from right to left. Um, so you can see the wall of green coming in the forecast uh, from the top of the high peaks all the way up to, you know, at least 18 to 20,000 feet. Uh, and so, yeah, there's going to be some double-digit accumulations in Colorado. This is a pretty good extended period of time with snow accumulation and some pretty decent aura graphics. Uh, they don't necessarily blow me away, but yeah, there's some decent ones. <clears throat> Let me talk about the jet stream, the guiding uh, current of wind that's going to be pushing this around. Let me start this today, this Wednesday forecast. You can see the dip in the jet. That's a trough, an area of low pressure. That's the one that's moving into California. So I'm looking for the brighter colors, the oranges and the reds. That's going to represent stronger winds up at jet stream level at about 30,000 feet, guiding all of these storm systems around. So you can see the trough approaching California, the big storm out in the, uh, the east as well. All right, so by the time we get into Thursday, that area of low pressure is moving into the interior. And then it just nails Utah, Colorado. There's another little sort of trailing area of low pressure on the tail end of this thing, on the coattails. You can kind of see the little dip in the jet on the tail end. And that would probably rotate through Arizona and New Mexico. But that's Saturday, the tail end of all of this. Then high pressure for a day or two. And then here comes the next storm system. You can see the, the dip in the jet right there on Tuesday rolling into California. That's storm number two, and then that moves quickly through the interior. Then there's another storm system. So on Wednesday, there's another dip in the jet in area of low pressure approaching California, the Pacific Northwest, and then that rolls into the Intermountain West as well between uh, Thursday, Friday, and maybe even into early Saturday. Um, so a lot going on. Let me look at snow forecast accumulation over time. We'll start this at 11 o'clock today. So on this forecast model, the light blues are going to be the lightest accumulations of three inches or less. Greens are three to six. Yellows are six plus. Reds are 10 plus. There's our big storm rolling up into the northeast. <laughs> There's our storm coming out of the west. This is late today, Wednesday the 5th. Snow picks up in the uh, the Sierra, starts to overspread Nevada, and then into Utah, and then into Colorado. Snowing pretty good overnight to tomorrow morning. Heavy snow in a lot of places. This is 11 a.m. on Thursday, March 6th. There is late on, on the March the 6th. Um, some pretty good snow continuing across. This, this does seem to like snow in Wyoming. And I, I do think Hoggett and Ski Area could pick up a foot of snow out of this the Laramie Range, um, and this does does hit Colorado in, in some places with double-digit accumulation, but not everywhere. Uh, here we are at 11 a.m. on Friday the 7th. Snow winds down, storm moves out. There's that little area, trailing area of low pressure coming through the southern tier in New Mexico, Arizona. And then high pressure for a couple of days, and then we're waiting, and here comes the next storm system. This is early on Tuesday, March 11th, so this is this is way out there. Next storm hitting California moves into the interior, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, 
Another storm behind that with heavy snow for the Sierra. This is early on Thursday, March the 13th. And then that storm moves in to the Inner Mountain West and the Rockies. Um, let me show you a couple of, uh, well, let me show you my forecast. Um, all of today through the 10th. So this will take us all the way through the weekend. I've got 20 to 30 inches in the Wasatch. 20 to 30 inches. I, I think that's entirely possible. It's probably somewhere between 25 and 35 inches um, through a lot of little and big cottonwood canyons. This is the forecast I actually put together last night and used. Um, was going roughly two feet up in Park City and then 30 to 35 inches in Snowbird Alta. Um, roughly 25 to 30 inches solitude in Brighton. Powder Mountain looks good with about 30 to 35 inches and roughly 20 to 25 inches up there at Snow Basin. Kings Peak uh, gets hit with about 20 inches, roughly two feet. So it's all in that zone. I mean, you know, you can argue one way or the other, but it's it's a lot of snow at the end of the day for the Wasatch. <clears throat> Up in the Tetons, anywhere from 10 to 12 inches of accumulation, about a foot at Hoggeton. In Colorado, the biggest numbers are across the western slope of the state, and southwest Colorado as well. That's where I think we could see 8 to 16 inches of accumulation. Um, Aspen, Snowmass, the Highlands, um, down towards Silverton and Red Mountain Pass. I think that Telluride and uh, Pur Purgatory do okay with about a foot, and uh, Wolf Creek gets about 12 to 14. Less accumulation, probably 6 to 8 inches through Summit County, up towards Loveland and A Basin. Still a good snow on top of what you've already got in the last few days. 8 to 10 up there around Cameron Pass to Steamboat. Up in Montana, it's 3 to 6. Red Lodge gets a little bit more at 10. Interior BC looking at a lot of 8s, but quite a bit more with some really solid overrun uh, through Marmot Basin up there. I think you could pick up you know, 18 to 24 inches up there throughout this period. In the Pacific Northwest, there's a pretty sharp cutoff. Once you go south of Baker, there's not a lot in the forecast. Um, but Whistler Blackcomb could, could receive some of that rich flow. Down in California, you've got some today, and then you've got another storm coming after that. Probably a foot to 18 inches between Tahoe down towards Mammoth. Up in the northeast, again, some rain or a rain-snow mix today, and then you've got another storm. In fact, let me look at the timing on the northeast. Light on 3637, and then moderate on 310. 310 is probably the next best shot. So it's very late in the period that we could pick up some of these numbers but two to eight inches of Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and upstate New York. Um, all right, guys, we'll end on the big western map here. It's going to be a great 48 hours ahead, 72 hours ahead for a lot of Utah and Colorado, and for that uh, matter, a lot of Wyoming as well. 10 to 12 inches, up to a foot there across the, uh, uh, across the Tetons and Hoggeton. All right, guys, enjoy it. Um, we've got some good snow ahead. I appreciate you tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.